Welcome back. This time we're looking at the 2019 version of the Algebra 1 EOC All Questions from Reporting Category Number 2. So let's get started. What is the slope of the graph of y equals 12x minus 19? What's the slope of the line? Oh my gosh, this is so easy. I don't even have to solve for y. The slope is the number in front of the x which is D. I've never seen a question that easy on an EOC. There you go. Number five, the table shows the linear relationship between the average height in feet of trees on a, of trees on a tree farm and the number of years since the trees were planted. Automatically, before I even continue, you may recall from the 2018 version video or the 2017 version video, which I've got a lot of calculator tips and strategies that I talk about in the first video, the 2017 version, which I'll include a little link up here in the upper right corner. If you see it, go ahead and click it if you need to. Um, but when, I, when I'm given a table of values in my problem, it's a great idea to plug it in to L1 and L2. That's just my test taking strategy. So let's see if that will help us on this problem. What is the rate of change of the average height and feet of the trees on a farm with respect to the number of years since the trees were planted? If you don't understand the entire question that's asked, but you see what is the rate of change, what do I want you to write above rate of change? Slope. This is looking for the slope. So my little strategy of plug this into L1 and L2, that's going to work on this one. So we're going to go to stat, edit, Plug these values into L1 and L2, stat, calc, linreg, and you're going to get be given a slope of 7. So A in that case is 7 because it's AX plus B, not MX plus B, so just be careful about that. Okay, moving right along. And if you want to do that algebraically, you can always do that. These are just helpful little test taking strategies where you can use your calculator to help you. So on number seven, which graph best represents negative 5y equals negative 6x plus 15? Okay, well, I need to solve for y. So what do I need to do? Divide everything by negative 5, which means I get y equals positive 6 over 5 times x minus 3. This is the line I'm looking for. Once you've solved for y, you can plug it into y equals on your graph and see which one matches. But in this case, my answer is c. My y-intercept is negative 3, and my slope is positive 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 6, over 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5. There you go, 6 over 5. So that's my answer. Moving on, which graph best represents the solution set of y is greater than 3x minus 4? If you've already seen the 2017 and 2018 versions, you'll notice this is easier. What do we not have to do in this problem? We don't have to solve for y. y is already solved for. That's already easier. But let's make sure um, we can still do this. So y is greater than. Now what do you notice about the line? If I have a greater than, am I going to have a solid line or a dotted line? I'm going to have a dotted line. The or equal to down here, that would make it solid, but I don't see that. So then now, because it's greater than, are we going to shade above or below? Well, I like to put a greater than up there and a less than down here, and we shade up towards that greater than sign. So if I put my pen, my pencil on this line and I go up, that's above the line. So D is my answer. Moving on, number 20, the graph of a linear function is shown on the grid. What is the rate of change slope of y re with respect to x for this function? So that's just fancy schmancy for what's the slope? You're given two points. What can you do on your calculator? You can always use your slope formula. But if you've got a calculator and you're taking your Algebra 1 EOC, that one test that rates you for the entire year, I know it's kind of ridiculous, plug it into L1 and L2 and do a linear regression. Negative 3, 3.6, 5, 2. Linear regression, that'll tell you 
your slope is negative 0.2. So on my grid, looks like this. Here's a plus, here's a minus, negative 0.2. I could do negative 0 0.2, but just make it easy. Negative 0.2, that works perfectly fine. A company advertises on a website. A worker tracked the number of visits to the website and the number of clicks on the advertisement. The table shows the data for several days. A linear function can be used to model the data. Okay, I'm given a table of values. What's my test taking strategy? Plug it into stat, go to edit. This is L1, this is L2, plug it in, then stat, calc, linreg would be my next step, I betcha. Well, let's see. Based on the table, what is the best prediction of the number of clicks on the advertisement if 1,500 people visited the website? And I'm correct. I'm going to need a linear regression to make a prediction. Okay, so after I'm given this linear regression, I can plug the equation into y equals, and then I can look at my table of values, except I'm looking for when x is. 1,500. Whoo! Unless you know how to format your table to start at 1,500, that's going to be tough. Okay? So, one thing I can do is once I get my linear regression, I can just plug that 1,500 in for x and solve for y. That's a really good test taking strategy. And your answer is 83. Moving on, number 26. The graph of linear function f passes through the point neg 1, negative 9, and has a slope of negative 3. What is the 0 of f? Okay, academic vocabulary, what is 0? X-intercept. Solution. Root. 0. Those all mean x-intercept. And the x-intercept is when y is 0. I have my students clap that. The x-intercept is when y is 0. The y-intercept is when x is 0. Okay, so if I'm given this right here, 1, negative 9, that's an x value, that's a y value, it has a slope of negative 3. Okay, 1, negative 9 would be right here. And... Let's see, 1, negative 9, slope of negative 3, I can rise 1 and run 3 and then boom shakalaka, I've got another point. 0, negative 6, what can you do when you have two points? This is just a test taking strategy, there are other ways to solve this obviously. I'm given two points, what can I do? Plug it into stat, edit, stat, calc, lin, reg. Take your equation, plug it into y equals, and look at your table of values. You could also just keep going. Rise 1, rise 3, run 1, and you'll see that your x-intercept is right there at negative 2. So, a bunch of different ways to solve that one, but you really have to know what the question is asking. It's looking for an x-intercept. Okay, you got to start somewhere. It's giving you a point, plot it. You know your slope is negative 3? Okay, go from there. From that point at 1, negative 9, my slope is negative 3. Okay, number 35. The graph of linear function k passes through the points negative 7, 0, and 1, 8. Okay, given two points. All right, stat, edit, stat, lin, reg. You could also just plot your points, negative 7, 0, 1, 8, graph, oh my gosh, terrible, Ter you know what, I'm just going to re-graph re that one altogether. And, okay, much better, still not straight, there it is. Which of the state, which statement must be true? Okay, I'm going to go through all my answer choices. The slope of the graph of k is negative, is the slope negative? I can easily tell. It's positive, so it's not A. The graph of K passes through the point negative 1, negative 8. Well, that's down here. 
Nope, not true. The zero x-intercept of k is seven. Well, that would be over here. Not true, it must be d, let's make sure. The x-intercept of the graph of k is negative seven, absolutely, that's our answer. Moving on to number 39. The table shows a linear relationship between x and y. What is the slope? What's the slope? That's what it's asking. What's the rate of change of y with respect to x? A lot of students kind of struggle with this right here. It's just a fancy way of saying, what's the slope? Okay, so you can absolutely, when you're given a table of values, what is my test taking strategy? Stat edit, stat calc. Remember, these are just test taking strategies. Stat calc, linreg, and then look at your equation, y equals ax plus b, and that slope, it will tell you, is negative 9 over 2, which is a. You can always look at the difference, the change in y over the change of x. The change in y right here is negative 36. The change in x is positive 8. Negative 36 over 8 simplifies to negative 9 over 2. Okay, moving on to number 47. A college student has two different jobs. Her combined work schedules consist of no more than 48 hours in one week. Automatically, this is a difficult question because there's an inequality involved. So, which graph best represents the solution set for all possible combinations of x? the number of hours she worked at her first job, and y, the number of hours she worked at her second job in one week. So she can work no more than 48 hours in one week total, which means at her first job, she can't work more than 48 hours, and at her second job, she can't work more than 48 hours. Get it? And it has to be less than this right here. Okay, so my answer is A. This is a, what I would consider a difficult question for a lot of Algebra 1 students. So if you understand this, you're ahead of the game. So every point on this line is like a combination of the maximum amount that she could work or he. Oh no, it's a she, her. You know, if she works 36 hours at this first job, she can't work more than or 12 hours at the second job. See that right there? And she can work any amount less than that. Okay, moving on. Though Typically though, those inequality questions are just difficult for a lot of students. Which graph best represents this system of equations and its solution? What do I need to do? I need to solve for y. So I'm gonna write those down here. 8x minus 4y equals negative 16. And I'm going to go ahead and write 3x plus 15y equals negative 6. And I'm going to work through each of these and solve for y. So in this first one, to solve for y, I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides. Write it in slope-intercept form. Everything gets divided by negative 4, and I'm left with y equals negative 8 over negative 4 simplifies to positive 2x, negative 16 divided by negative 4 is positive 4. So there's my first equation. My second equation, I'm still solving for y. Remember, you have to be able to solve for y. You can, you can plug it into y equals after you solve for y, but you have to be able to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. And I get 15y equals negative 3x minus 6. And what do I need to do now? Divide everything by 15. Negative 3 divided by 15. Again, you can always do that on your calculator. Math, enter, enter. It's negative 1 fifth x. Negative 6 over 15 simplifies to negative 2 over 5. Once you've solved for y, you can plug it into y equals and see which matches. What I would suggest you really have to focus on, maybe what you could do is maybe just enter in this equation first and go through and eliminate some answer choices. But my answer is B, 
and I can see that this line right here is 2x plus 4. My y-intercept is 4 and my slope is 2. The other line is y equals negative 1 fifth x minus 2 fifths. So there's minus 2 fifths and the slope is negative 1 over 5, up 1 over 5. My answer is B. Moving on, number 52. Linear parent function f is shown on the grid. Which graph best represents h of x equals negative 4x, or negative f of x plus 3? Okay, this is that function notation that a lot of students really struggle with. So what happens right here? If f of x equals x, that's the parent function, y-intercept of 0, slope is rise 1, run 1, rise 1, run 1. That's just 1x, okay? So f of x equals x. Then the graph that represents this, this tells me I'm going to have a reflection across the x-axis. This tells me that my y-intercept is going to move up 3. So I'm definitely going to have a y-intercept of 3. Which ones can I eliminate? h has a y-intercept of negative 3. j has a y-intercept of negative 3. So using the rule of substitution, if f of x equals x, anywhere I see f of x, what could I replace it with? x. So h of x equals negative x plus 3, which means you could plug in y equals negative x plus 3 on your calculator, and you would see that g is your answer. It has a slope of negative 1. And this concludes your tutorial video for reporting category number two for the Algebra 1 EOC 2019 version. I hope it was helpful.